And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors Channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California, where it is bright and it is sunny. And I'm going to turn off Bloomberg. Don't want to hear those guys anymore. Um, and yeah, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about Bitcoin's price action, NASDAQ, inflation, the dollar, gold, and good old gasoline. We're going to touch on Adam, Luna, XRP, and Cardano. And what do I got up here? First off, uh, Bitcoin on the daily, right? And again, we've been talking about it. It's kind of boring, but we're waiting for a daily closure above 46,000 or below 33,000 to get the me next major move to the upside or to the downside. Uh, to the upside, we're looking for a move up towards 52,000. And to the downside, we'd be looking for a move down to about... Oh, 25,000 and probably going to get a small bounce around 29 or 30. Uh, definitely. There's a lot of support in that area. So uh, something to be aware of. However, yeah. So what else do we got here? Um, we got momentum remaining to the downside. We've got volatility decreasing as we're putting in a little bit of a higher low here. And I would say this is more of a corrective bounce. And where would the bounce target be? Uh, any kind of a daily closure back above, call it 39.5. And I would expect a bounce to get extended in this medium turn range uh, somewhere near around uh, 41 to 41.8. And, uh, you know, in fact, we get a daily closure back above the 618 at 42, call it 42,000. I would expect we retest the high somewhere around 45 to 46. Um, what else do we have on the daily time frame playing out here? So we've got higher lows in RSI. Let me delete that one and I will delete that one as well. Um, and we are kind of holding a little bit of a trend line here. Um, something like that. And um, I would say that is good if that trend line does hold. Now, if we do get a daily closure back, I'd say below that trend line, Probably going to swipe this uh, wick low here at about 35.5. And you could probably use a four hour closure back below there. And yeah, probably going to fill in that 35.7 range there um, to start it off. Any kind of a four hour closure back below 36.9, call it 40,000, and probably going to tag. Um, yeah, 30, yeah, not 40,000, call it uh, 37,000, and probably going to swipe the lows again there at 34.7. Um, so, again, we have declining volatility, momentum up on the upside, uh, sorry, momentum is up and will remain up as long as we are above 37,700. Um, and what else do I see here? We've got a couple lower highs coming in here, and that'll set us up with a few drives of bearish divergence. RSI is making higher highs, but price is making lower highs. And um, yeah, as long as the four hour remains below, I'd say 39,600, uh, not looking good for the bulls. Um, this would probably be a decent area to uh, hit the red button. And with an easy way to manage risk as any kind of a, you know, hourly closure back above there would. Um, any kind of an hourly closure above there would likely, um, you know, send us to the upside. OK, that's it for Bitcoin. I'm going to move on to kind of just. Some dates again to be aware of uh, March 10th, which is coming up here in two days. Uh, the Fed is going to release the consumer price inflation numbers, okay? And we already know, you know, inflation is much higher than they tell us. But if they tell us inflation was higher than expected because of the new oil Russia ban, and that might not happen to us this month. It might not hit us till next month, but I know we all see it at the gas pump. It's like, what do you think that's going to do to the markets? When inflation numbers came out last month, I'll, I'll just tell you, um, the NASDAQ, when the inflation numbers came out last month, I believe that was around 
February 10th. February 10th. Inflation numbers came out higher than expected. And we saw quite a bit of retracement there. That was um, 12% down for the NASDAQ. And um, so just be aware of that in a couple of days, those inflation numbers are going to come out. Um, and the real issue, which is the wage price spiral, and that is when wages are actually rising faster than inflation, um, that in combination with the rate increase coming up on March 16th, I think it's the perfect sto storm for a bit of a recession, and stocks could in fact come much lower, but that's just my opinion. Um, if I was looking at the charts, I would say, where would we, one, we got the death cross on the daily here for the NASDAQ. Let's clean this up. So what is the death cross? That is when the green 55, I use the 55 day. Some people use the 50. When the 55 day crosses the 200 day exponential moving average to the downside, that is known as a death cross. Now, what you typically want to see is price action gets sucked up into the cross somewhere around here and then start to retrace. And that is a good death cross. Now, some might already consider that this little test right here, that might be close enough is close enough. And we are down, down, down to doggy town. Um, what else do I see here? We are getting a bit of a bounce here after good old Biden was just on the news and said they're going to ban all the oil imports from Russia. And um, it might have been one of the, uh, you know, buy the rumor, sell the news type of events. And, um, you know, they're, they're just washing out some people who were getting short um, right there. But where's our critical region here for support on the NASDAQ? I'd say this guy right here. Yep. Right here. Any kind of a any kind of a daily closure below there going to get you a move down to 12,200 and that you know the old saying if we're 20 percent down we're in a recession well if we get that move that'll put us down at 26 percent down and probably a you know a bounce from there and then you know probably going to tag this support down there and i think that would be healthy for this market that really is just gone like this right look at this market I mean, this is the NASDAQ. This is the NASDAQ from 2016. Let's go back a little farther. And how much higher did it go? Since 2008. Wow. Well, I mean, this almost looks like a Bitcoin chart. But needless to say, this thing has gone straight to the moon. And at some point, it's got to have one of those 50% retracements. Um, we are starting to see all the pieces of the puzzle come together here. And, um, you know, I would just be aware of this. I would be aware of what NASDAQ does, um, you know, probably going to affect a lot of other assets. And I think this does place play into, um, you know, the great reset, which is, um, pretty much where the government devalues our currency to nothing. And, uh, then, you know, puts people uh, on universal basic income. And, um, you know, all the people that didn't buy Bitcoin, that's why Bitcoin is a life raft away from traditional investments, which are crashing. And frankly, away from the banks, which are robbing us all blind, right? They, they give us 0.05% interest at the bank. And then uh, they charge 30% on credit cards, 10% on auto loans, 4% for your house or whatever they're charging. And who makes all the money between 0.05% what you're getting at the bank and then 30% on credit cards, right? The answer is the bank makes all the money and uh, they don't give it back to any of us people that put our life savings there. They have been robbing us blind for years. So Bitcoin could be your last chance to have a real retirement plan. It's a fixed supply digital gold asset that has a trillion dollar market cap with room to grow. In fact, Fidelity thinks Bitcoin kit could hit 250,000 over the next three to five years. And uh, we think after the inflation numbers come out and we get another rate hike, 
Um, this could be one of the best buying opportunities we've seen since March 2020 when Bitcoin fell from 10000 to 3000 So again, the famous old saying is, buy while there is blood in the streets, even if it's your own blood. And so what we're recommending, you know, is people kind of get their account set up, essentially put some more dry gunpowder on the side so you can be ready to pull the trigger uh, when there is even more blood in the streets. So just an idea out there, if you're interested in taking a look at a Bitcoin or crypto backed IRA, I'm going to provide a link in the description below. You can uh, get a free investor guide and um, we're happy to help you out with that. But back into Bitcoin's price action. Actually, we already talked about Bitcoin. What is it doing it? On, what is it doing it? What is it doing on the CMEs? Yeah, we're getting about a bit of a relief rally or a little bounce off of this area here. And I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if Bitcoin does get a little bounce up to the nine or the twenty one, something like that. But if we do start closing dailies back above the twenty one, that's when I'd expect you know good chance good chance we could go ahead and kind of revisit the highs here. And but again, conservative investors, you know, people like myself, I don't know what your situation is. I'm waiting for a daily closure above or below these regions for the next momentous move, right? Um, I like to get the big moves. I don't like to sit here in middle land and hope and guess, um, but that's just me. So what else did we say we're going to talk about? Luna, Luna again, playing out a bit of a rally here as the rest of the market is. And as you can see, this is one of the stronger altcoins. You know, Bitcoin's getting a 3% bounce. Luna's getting an 8% bounce. What do you know? Um, and Here's what I would say. Uh, if we do get stopped out at the 618, that would be your classic confirmation of a bull trap. So be on the aware for that. Um, and on the shorter term time frames, what do we got here? Yeah, I would say any kind of a four hour closure back above 89 is going to give you a test back to the highs. Um, to the downside, any kind of a four hour closure below 76 is probably going to get you a move down to 70 bucks. And that's just real easy, easy trading. Um, on the other side of the fence, um, what else do we see here? Vol volatility is kind of still coming down, about to curve up. And I would say if volatility does increase here and we do get a closure back even above 85.80, um, that's going to look good for extension. But really, I'd be waiting for a four hour above this region here at 88.30. And we want to see volatility expand. However, if volatility continues to decrease as the price moves up, that would be a corrective move. And I would expect another lower high to get put in somewhere in this region. Um, alongside bearish divergence, which what is that again? When RSI is making higher highs and price is making lower highs. So uh, we will have two drives if we cannot take out this high right now in about 2 hours and 11 minutes. Okay, Adam, another one here, um, one of the strongers, one of the strongers <laughs> playing out, uh, you know, a little bit of a bounce as well. And we do got these higher lows coming in here on the four hour. And I would say, what would I say here? This is more of a corrective bounce. Again, volatility is decreasing, stokes are up, and then we've got how many drives of bearish divergence do we have? Hidden bearish divergence. Uh, let's see here. One, two, is that two? Is that, that's, yeah, that, that looks like this, this drive. Are, so we got one higher high there and one lower high there. And this is not a confirmed lower high or a confirmed lower low yet. So kind of in the middle here, the middle of the pack. And to be conservative on this one, I'd be waiting for a four hour closure right above this guy here, this swing high, whatever you want to call this guy right here. That was the last breakdown area. Four hour closure back above 29.87. And I would be looking for the measure move to get hit off of this last range, which uh, the way you'd measure that, something like this. And we would just take that. Yeah. And that would uh, get us back up here. 
And where does that line up with the 618 on the daily time frame? Let's see. And again, corrective bounce at best. When volatility is decreasing, um, well, we don't have Stokes up, they're down. But um, let's see where that lines up on our Fibonacci extension from the high to the low. And that is coming up just above the 618. So again, watch out for the bear trap, or the, excuse me, watch out for the bull trap in this area at the 618. Um, frankly, wow, look at NASDAQ. Let's take a look at NASDAQ playing out a little bounce as well. We did say yesterday very likely to fill in this wick. Um and I mean, close enough is close enough. Playing out a bounce now. And what do we have here on the bottom side here? So we do have hidden bullish divergence. So price is making lower lows and RSI is making higher lows. Excuse me. That is regular bullish divergence. And how would this get confirmed? And I would say any kind of a daily closure back above 13,855. And that, the first target is the 21, which that doesn't give you much, but the second target is that green 55. And that would line up with a perfect death cross, right? So what we want to do is get everybody real bullish again and sucked into this price action, thinking, oh, the party is back on. And let's, let's take a look. Using those fibs, does that line up? No. Let's 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 take a look from this high right here, from the cycle high to the low, and that lines up the 0.5. So somewhere between the 0.5 and the 618 would be your bull trap. Um, any kind of a daily closure back above 1502, and that's going to look. I I would actually raise it up to the breakdown area right here at 15,500, and that'll look good for a move back up to the highs, but you know, more aggressive traders would use the 0.5. And um, yep, that along, let's take a look at the dollar gold and oil really quick. The dollar, what's the dollar doing today? Dollar coming down for a little bit of a pity bounce. And we did hit 99.42. And what have we been saying? Our target on the dollar is a buck oh three. And where does that come from? Well, this massive consolidation, we've been calling this out since the dollar broke this guy. So we took a retracement from this high to this low and said, hey, look, first target is 97 with a small pullback and then off to the races to revisit the highs coming back from March of 2020 when the dollar. So what's funny is, you know, the dollar skyrockets whenever we're in a crisis. March of 2020, that was the coronavirus dump. Flight to safety. Everybody runs to the dollar for safety. Um, I don't know how much of a good idea that is and how bad that's going to be for the economy. If the dollar is getting stronger and the cost of everything is going up, I mean, what do you think that's going to do to earnings? Um, people are going to spend less, right? And, um, and then the cost of borrowing goes up. When interest rates go up, it's like a double whammy. Uh, double whammy for... And I could be totally wrong, right? And so where would I get invalidation, right? If we start closing the dollar back down below 96, and I would say that would look good for pretty much a retracement down at least uh, to, yeah, test the support here at 94. I don't know. I don't trade the dollar, but it's interesting to see how the dollar, and here's another odd thing. And we did call this one out yesterday or last week. And we actually, I've been talking about this for a month. Uh, or two months, I think since gold back in July, I was saying, look, any kind of a weekly closure back above this wick high would give us a, a test of the highs. So what would a cup and handle, what's the new measure move cup and handle off of this guy? Uh, this is going to look crazy for gold. I would love to see gold do this. Digital gold, because if gold does that, Bitcoin, the real gold, the harder asset, is really going to fly. And next target on gold, 2200. I could see that happening. Definitely uh, Bank of America, they were saying gold will hit 2200. 
Um, and then the next target, if this area breaks, so why don't we just pencil that in there and we'll say, hey, any kind of a weekly closure back above this guy right here at $2,082. Next target is going to be $2,274. And um, I'd say with all the inflation and the oil spiking, $2,200 gold looks like it's in the cards. But be aware, um, usually you're going to sell off of these range highs, right? The first test is a sell. We're already getting a sell right now. And uh, today is the day, you know, March, March, what is it? March, March, March. Um, what is the day today? March 8th, March 8th, 2022, gold hits $2,076 again. Um, that is just awesome for gold. Congratulations to all you gold holders that have held out this long for the last year. Uh, maybe might want to, um, I don't know. It's not financial advice, but the old saying, take profits early and often. If you're in a profit, um, might want to consider it. Anyways, that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did drop me a like and subscribe, any of my friends out there watching, make sure you post a comment and tell us what you thought and what you want to hear about. If anybody has something they want to hear about it, post a comment. I'll check it out. Um, and again, if you want to put Bitcoin or any other cryptos in your IRA, we have a link in the description below. Thanks a lot and have a blessed day.